If you can secure your handout, we are continuing in our lesson on growing faith. This is part two of that lesson, and uh, because there's such a tremendous amount of ground to cover, I'm going to uh, jump right in. Uh, so you can see from the screen and from your handout, I'm giving the New Living Translation version of the text in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. The text says, I am writing to you who share the same precious faith we have. This faith was given to you because of the justice and fairness of Jesus Christ, our God and our Savior. By his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know him, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous and glory, rather, and excellence. Verse 4 says, and because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires, the King James says, by lust. And so we said before as a theme that our growing uh, lifestyle or a growing believer is a knowing believer. And we said that there are some things that a victorious Christian must embody in their lifestyle because you don't want to just be growing old. And I asked the question before, are you growing up or are you growing old? Uh, only you and quite frankly others know that uh, because it's easy to grow old. It's not easy to grow up. And we're not talking about physical growth. We know that after a certain age, we start bending over. <laughs> we start seemingly getting shorter. Um, but we should be getting wiser. And if we're not, there's no one to blame but us. Some, someone say amen. <laughs> and so there are four things that I said as a summary, and then we'll delve into some specifics with a greater emphasis today uh, on precious promises. We said that uh, according to Peter, and he would know because he went through quite a bit of building and proving his faith. That's why he calls it precious faith, which we spent quite a bit of time on last week. And then he talked about divine power, which we dealt with last week, power for life and for godliness. And then he said, you have precious promises. We touched on that and ended our Bible study on some of those promises, but I want to expand on them because um, it speaks to what I think is so important for every believer to understand, and that is the sovereignty of God. That means that God is in absolute, total control, both of good things and bad things. And I think I mentioned to you this before, that God doesn't have to be the author of confusion, nor the author of sin and evil to have power over it. I think I need to say that again so that you grab it. God does not have to be the author of evil, the author of confusion, to have power over it. You say, well, it don't seem like he had much power over it because it's running rampant. In the infinite wisdom of God, some things he allows for reasons that oftentimes we don't know until later when he reveals them. And maybe never on this time or this side of the Jordan, maybe some of these things aren't going to be revealed until we get to heaven. Some things such as, why are there people who are homorphodites or, or people who are born with uh, conditions that don't seem to be fair? Little babies coming into the earth uh, having no limbs. I think we talked about this preacher whose name escapes me now. He has no, no limbs, no legs, no arms, but he preaches all around the world. Just an awesome man of God. I've listened to him. Uh, you ought to 
look for him on the web. He's very easy to find because how many preachers you know with no arms and no legs? But the question is, he was born that way. So why? I said some things we may not fully understand until we see Jesus. But there are some things we can't understand. And that is the sovereignty of God and the grace of God. We're called Living Grace Church. And so why are these uh, themes in the Word of God so important as it relates to precious promises? And that's why I want to delve in that uh, subject in depth tonight. First of all, we said last week that God's promises are reliable. That's why they're precious. And that our faith means nothing if it's not backed up by a faithful and reliable God. Uh, the Bible says that it is impossible for God to lie. 